Hi guys, I am Mary Beth Temple and I'm thrilled to be back here for The Knitting Circle. If you are a fan of The Knitting Circle, you know I've made tons of videos here. But today we're going to work on the Denim Cables Floor Pillow. Now I'm going to make a smaller swatch. I'm not going to go ahead and make the whole thing because it's 24 inches square and I'd only get two rows done by the time we have to end our time together. But there's a couple things that I want to talk about. One is how to do a border that's three colors. One is two different ways to do two color cables. And then these cables travel. They're going to go towards the center and then they're going to go back towards their outer edges. So those are the three techniques that I really want to make sure we get a good handle on. So I'm going to start with this three color border at the bottom and I'm just going to go ahead and cast on a very, you know, not a whole lot of stitches in each color because we don't need to see, we don't need to see that over 107 stitches. So I'm literally casting on each of the three colors with its own separate ball of yarn. And again, the reason I'm doing that is to, uh, to make sure I get all three colors in my border. Now I'm going to go ahead, even though it's garter stitch, I'm going to designate a right side and a wrong side. And I'm going to change my colors always on the wrong side, sort of intarsia style. So let me just get this little bit of madness out of the way here. And we'll jump right in. And um, the pattern, when you download the pattern, is in uh, Lion Brand Jeans yarn. This is Big Twist from Joanne. So anything that has this sort of denim looking aspect to it will look really nice on that pillow. And I like the ones that look like denim. They're easy to wash and take care of. If you're going to throw that pillow on the floor and, and let people hang out on it or the dog lay on it or whatever you're going to do with it, then it's, it's very nice to uh, have that. Let's just go for the bobbins. So I'm going to designate one color as A, one as B, one as C. Again, not using the exact colors that are in the pattern, but that's okay. And I'm, let me cast on, let's say 12 stitches in each color. I'm using a long tail cast on because that is my preferred method, but uh, you, can, you can use whichever cast on works best for you. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's my color A. And again, if you're following along with the pattern, I believe it's 35 or 36 colors, uh, stitches. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the second color as if I'm beginning at the very beginning. I'm not attaching them at this point. I'm going to do that when I start knitting my rows. So once again, I'm just going to do 12 for the sake of demonstration. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then let's throw our third color on there. Once again, starting each color as its own individual cast on. I'm not trying to join them at this point. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now with a long tail cast on, your cast on counts as your first knit row. So what I'm looking at right now, that's my wrong side. So when I turn the work and begin to knit, that's my right side. And so I'm going to make my color changes on the side away from me at this point. And I'm going to do that in Tarja style, as I said earlier, which is new color under old color consistently, or the other way around if that's how you were taught. But you want to be consistent. You want to either always bring the new color of yarn under the old color, or you always want to bring the new color of yarn over the old color, but you want to be consistent throughout so that these three sections of the border are joined as we go, and they're not three separate pieces of knitting, even though we did three separate cast-ons. Now, 
Don't forget, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat, and I will get to them if I can. So here we go. I'm at the end of my first color. And I'm getting ready for my second color. And I want to keep the yarn crossing on the side that is away from me. So here's my working yarn that I just finished with. I want to make sure that I grab the working yarn of my new color and bring it under. New under old is the way I like to do it. So it doesn't look like much now, but as we keep knitting, that's going to keep that join consistent. So I'm going to knit across my second color. And then we're going to do that same thing again. I'm going to bring my third color under my second color. Got two more stitches. So once again, here we are. They're not joined at all, but we want to make it so that they'll join as we knit. So I'm going to bring my new color, which is the dark, under my old color, which is this kind of peachy orange we have going on here. And I'm going to go ahead and knit off those last 12 stitches in my case. And you'll have, again, I believe it's somewhere between 34 and 36 if you're following along with the pattern. Now, another thing I want to talk about with this pattern as, uh, as you're waiting for me to catch up and do something interesting, is when I made the pillow, I only knit one side. And then I got some fleece at the fabric store, and I used fleece for my backing, and that's for two reasons. One is, if you're knitting a piece of fabric that is 25 inches square for a 24-inch floor pillow, that's a lot of knitting. <laughs> and I didn't want to knit both sides. I didn't want to knit it twice. Um, but the other thing is, it's um, the side that is towards the floor is going to get a lot of wear and tear. Again, especially if you throw the pillow on the floor or the dog wants to lay on it or something like that. So um, I really recommend that you do that if you want to. But if you want to knit both sides, that's totally fine. You can knit this 25 inch square twice and put your pillow in there and you want to join it inside the border. So now I'm on my second row. So this is a wrong side row. So I'm going to keep up with that new under old technique, but it's going to be on the side of the work that's facing me. So here we are, we're coming up to that color change. So I'm going to bring the yarn to the wrong side because that's where I want the change to happen. And I'm bringing my new color, the color I'm switching to, I'm bringing it under the old color. And now I'm going to have to put it back on the other side because again, I want the color change on the wrong side of the work. But of course, I want my yarn behind me on the other side when I'm making the knit stitch. So we're going to do that one more time. And again, it's a little loosey-goosey right now, but it does tighten up as you continue on. So here we are at the end of my second color. I'm bringing the yarn from the side that's away from me. I'm bringing it towards me. I'm bringing the new color under the old color taking the yarn back to the side that's away from me so I can set up a knit. So the color change on the side that's towards me on a wrong side row, but obviously the yarn has to be on the other side of the needles or else I can't make the knit stitch. So 
So one more time. Now you can see that my bobbins here are getting a little bit tangled up. It is definitely something that you want to do at the end of every row is untwist your three colors because it can be a little tedious otherwise. I'm going to just do that one more time and then we'll move on to something more exciting. So I'm going to knit the first color as it presents. And now this is a right side row, so that color change is happening on the side that's away from me. And you can see they're all joined up now, and it's much easier to see what's happening. So new under old, and I can go on my merry way. And you can, you can see how that's joined up now. And if I was coming the other way, I'm just cheating here. I'm not doing a full row. Bring the yarn towards you so you can do the color change. And then put it back so you can knit the stitch. So that's all we need to know about the border. Let's take a look at this piece I did earlier and you can get a better look at it. So here it is on the right side and you just have the three sections, one right next to each other. And if you look on the wrong side, if you look right here where my finger's pointing, you can see where that twist is happening. But because it was consistent, because I always went new under old, it's a nice, neat finish. So even though it's visible, it doesn't look like the wrong side. It doesn't look like we made any kind of mess. We've got that going on right here. So now let's take a look at the cables, which is where the fun stuff happens. Now I acknowledge that I have knit this pillow before, so I cheated a little bit. And I didn't put my stitch markers where they belonged before. So to set up, you're going to, let's, uh, let's see what the pattern says. So you're going to knit five. So for this piece, the beginning stitches and the end stitches, the first five and the last five are always knit. And that's going to give you a nice garter stitch border on the two sides. So whether you're doing a right side row or the wrong side row, your first and last five stitches are always knit. Then it said, so you're going to begin with the wrong side row. So you're going to purl, in this case, 27, place a marker, knit one, purl three, and then you're going to add your second color with the new color. And to add the color, I'm just pulling up a fold maybe four to six inches from the end of the, uh, from the cut end. I want to make sure I have enough in there to weave it in later, but I'm not tying knots or anything crazy like that. I'm going to place my marker knit uh, purl 27, place a marker, knit one, purl three. Then I've got my next color. I'm going to purl three, knit one, place the marker, purl 27, knit five. So what's going to happen here is you are always going to knit each color as it presents. So we're going to do some twisty turny and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But you've got your purl column before and after the cable, and that doesn't change. That's always going to be the color that you're, you're working with when you're coming up to the cable section. Here, let me pull that apart a little bit so you can see it. So you can see here's my little column. My light blue is staying with my light blue fabric. My peach is staying with my peach, and over here, my peach is staying with my peach, and my dark is staying with my dark. It's only the legs of the cable that twist. That purl column stays the same. Now, the other thing I did mention in the pattern, which I'm not doing on camera because I'll get all twisted up, is I am, uh, you can, if you want to, make a bobbin for each leg of the cable. So each, this is a um, cable six front, so there's six stitches involved in the cable, 
and there's three stitches in each leg. So if you want to have a bobbin here, and again, I mentioned it in the pattern then that makes the back neater, but here's the thing. We're making a pillow and nobody's ever going to see it. So this is what the back looked like without the bobbin. And it just doesn't bother me that much. So for this particular sample, I did not go ahead and put the bobbins in because I just felt like it wasn't, wasn't necessary. But you can if you want to. If that, if that uh, float across the back concerns you, you can absolutely do that. So I'm going to knit a row. It's, I'm going to knit the row with the cable cross. So this is row 12. So the first rows, one through six, are setting up the cable and having your first cable cross. From here on out, we have to decrease towards the center and increase towards the outside. And that's because we want that cable to travel in towards the center. But despite the fact that there are decreases and later on there will be increases in this pattern, we are not changing the stitch count. The stitch count for you uh, is 107 stitches and it will always be 107 stitches. So one of the things you have to remember is that every time you have an increase, you're going to have a decrease that matches it. So I've knit my first five stitches no matter what row I'm on and I'm on the right side row. So I'm working in stockinette on these panels until I get to the cable cross. And here's where my stitch marker would have been if I wasn't lazy when I was making the swatch. And I'm going to go ahead and purl that stitch. So now I'm going to do my cable. I'm going to grab my cable needle. And I like the ones with the hooks in them, but you can use whichever kind of one you want. And I like to use the short side. So I'm going to grab those three stitches. And it's easy to see because they're a different color. And I'm going to drop them to the front of the work because we're always doing cable six front on this. Now the only even vaguely tricky bit is I want to take the working yarn with it. I do not want to leave the working yarn behind because that makes a big giant float and that's very unattractive. So whether you use the bobbins or not, I recommend you bring the working yarn with the leg when you move it. So my three stitches are in the front. I had a purl stitch so I had to get my yarn to the back so I could knit. I'm going to knit the three stitches, one, two, three, from the left hand needle, needle. And then I'm going to knit the three stitches from the cable needle. And now's when I'm going to put that working yarn back behind. So again, it's a little bit fiddly, but you can see it came with me. So then I don't have any unfortunate crosses in the front of the work. I forgot to make my increase. I am fired. So let me, uh, let me undo that and we'll do that again. I forgot the increase over here. Remember we had a big discussion about, uh, about uh, increases and decreases and then I forgot to do it. So I'm going to make my increase or my decrease and I'm going to do it before the purl column. So let me just unpick these stitches real quick. Thankfully, I only got four stitches past where I wanted to be. So this is where we were. I'm right before the purl, so the purl hasn't happened yet. Ugh, sorry guys. And I'm going to make one. And to do that, I'm going to pull up that horizontal bar I'm going to put it on my left hand needle and I'm going to knit one through the back loop. So there's my increase. I've added a stitch. There's my purl. Then I took my three stitches. I put them on the cable needle and dropped it and brought my working yarn with it. Now I'm going to knit three off the left hand needle. Now I'm going to take my cable leg and I have to knit those stitches, but I'm going to take my working yarn with me and put it in the back of the work where it belongs. 
going to knit three. One, two, three, and purl. Now, I had an increase on this side, so that means I need a decrease on this side. And so for this decrease, I want it to go this way. I want to have a left-leaning decrease, so I'm going to make an SSK. So I'm going to slip the first stitch. I'm going to slip the second stitch. I'm going to put it back on my left-hand needle, and I'm going to knit two together through the back loop. So that's my left-leaning decrease, my SSK. Now the pattern's going to tell us to keep knitting until there are two stitches remaining before that purl column. And again, your piece is going to be so much bigger than mine. I just wanted a swatch that would uh, get us through this afternoon. So there's my purl column right here. And here's my two stitches. So I'm going to do a knit two together on this side because I want the decrease to go this way. I want a right leaning decrease. So I'm going to go ahead and knit two together. Purl one. Now I know I have a cable cross coming and I need to take the colors with me. So I'm going to put this dark blue on my cable needle. That's three stitches. And again, you can use whatever kind of cable needle you like. And I'm going to bring the working yarn with it. I'm going to bring it to the front. Now I'm going to knit the three stitches. Two, three. And I have to knit the three stitches from the cable needle, but I'm going to take that working yarn and put it to the back where it belongs for me to make a knit stitch. One, two, three. And again, I'd have my markers in here on either side of the purls. Purl one. So we had a decrease on this side, so that means we need an increase on this side. So I'm going to do that, make one again. I'm going to lift the horizontal bar between the stitch I've just completed and the next stitch on my needle. I'm going to put it onto my left hand needle, bringing that left hand needle in front to back. And I'm going to knit one through the back loop. So there's my increase. And now I'm going to go ahead and knit to the end of the row. So the increases and decreases are always paired. And for this section of the pattern, the decreases are in the center section and the increases are in the outer section. And what that's going to do is make that cable head towards the inside. Now, if you follow along with the pattern, it tells you to keep going, uh, following the cable pattern with the incre paired increases and decreases until your work measures 24 inches from the start of the cable section, not the very cast on edge. So you're going to measure from here. And then to count how many crosses you have. And in the case of the sample that is on the pattern, I had 11 crosses. So after we have done all that, then we're going to change the orientation of our increases and decreases. But right now, let's just do a wrong side row real quick, just so you can get the idea of how it's going. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. So I'm going to knit five, even though it's a wrong side row. Three, four, five. And then I'm going to purl across till I get to where that, it was a purl column on the right side. It's a knit column on the wrong side, and this is a wrong side row. Three, I guess I should have made a smaller sample. <laughs> Still knitting away here. All right, there's my knit column. Going to knit. Now, my next three stitches are the dark blue, so I'm just going to go ahead and purl them. And 
And I'm going to keep up with that Intarsia style color change. I'm going to bring the new color under the old color. Pearl 3. Knit 1. Pearl across until I get to the next column of knit. And again, you can put your stitch markers there if you uh, prefer to do that. And I would use the stitch markers if I was wearing, using a darker yarn, perhaps. Um, and I couldn't see easily where that knit column was. But since I have these bright colors, I can see what's going on. There's my knit. There's my pearl. Two, three. Changing colors, bringing the new color under the old color consistently throughout the whole piece because it just makes it prettier. But honestly, if this is something that is uh, fiddly for you, once you uh, put your pillow form in there, nobody's going to see this side anyway. So this is, uh, you don't have to get too carried away about the uh, color changes, even if you are somebody who tends to be persnickety about that kind of thing. Nobody's going to see them. Almost to the end of this row. And then there's my last five stitches, and those are always going to be knit. So we have a question. It says, about intarsia in general, does working in intarsia change the gauge of the fabric at all? For example, most of the pillow is stuck in that stitch. Do you find the gauge to be pretty much the same as if you had just knit stuck in that stitch all in one color. I'm just curious. Um, actually, that's a super good question. The gauge of this is going to be a little different than stuck in that, but it's not the intarsia that does it to you. It's the cable. So as many of you know, if so here I've got six stitches in my cable, right? And this is six stitches in stuck in that. But my six stitches in a cable are much narrow, and cables tend to draw in widthwise. So if you're doing a gauge swatch, and if you're doing this pattern in particular, I have uh, given you a gauge just in plain stockinette, but the cable's going to bring your work in widthwise a little bit because cables do that. Um, intarsia should be the same gauge. And this is not tech, uh, now we're getting really fiddly here for those of you who are serious knitters. This is not technically intarsia. Intarsia is when you are making a color work section and you're using bobbins and you are having more than one color in a row. So here is more than one color in a row, and I called it intarsia style because that's how I'm making the yarn work. It's similar to intarsia. I wouldn't necessarily call this an intarsia piece. So that's probably a little fiddly for most of the world, but um, I'm somebody who will sit here and talk about knit fabric all day. <laughs> so. Um, now, I'm going to show you this and it's going to look a little twisty because I'm not really ready for another cable cross row. Ah, actually, let's put another row in. Why not? We have time. Uh, but that was a really good question. So if you're knitting intarsia correctly, it should not affect your gauge. How's that for a short answer? <laughs> So here I am coming up on my cables. So you're going to have a cable cross every sixth row. And that's written out in the pattern for you to read. But I know a lot of people like to sort of read their knitting. They don't want to look at the pattern every single page. So you're always knitting the knits and purling the pearls. Once you've got it set up, you're always bringing your new color under your old color when it's time. And you're never knitting a stitch in a different color. So if you're knitting on color A, you're working with color A. If you're knitting on a section that's color B, you're using color B. There is no instance in this pattern in which you are knitting on a stitch that's a different color than the working yarn you have in your hand. So if that's happening to you, 
you've made a little mistake somewhere and you need to catch up with that. So I'm going to just put another uh, row on this and we'll see if there's any more questions. And uh, then we will look at changing, alternating the increases and the decreases. But I do want to make it so that you can see what's going on. And as you know, if you knit cables, very rarely do you have a cable cross on top of a cable cross. It just makes the work so tight and crazy that you can't really see what's happening. Um, so this piece, uh, it, it, it's, let's see. I think, you, I think this piece is big enough that you can just start to see that these cables are tracking inwards. And if you look at the photograph on the pattern, you see uh, it's a subtle change, but it, um, what's the word I'm using? There's a big difference between the first cable cross and the 11th. As you're knitting, it's not a big difference between your second cable cross and your third. So it looks like nothing's happening, but when you uh, are working with a canvas the size of a 25 inch square, you really can get there and uh, see what's going on. And as always, my first and last stitches are, first and last five stitches are knit. All right, come on guys, now is the time to answer questions. I have one more whole row to put on here. <laughs> so once again, I'm gonna go ahead and do a wrong side row. I'm gonna knit the first five, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna purl across till I see that knit column or until I hit my stitch marker, if I had used a stitch marker. I really like to do intarsia. I think it's pretty cool, but uh, I took, uh, there's a designer by the name of Sally Melville who did a lot of intarsia work in her career. And I had the good luck to take a couple of classes with her. So uh, I just, I think that's a very interesting way to work. So once again, here's my color change, bringing my new under my old. One, two, three. There's my knit. So the wrong side rows are basically the same. No matter what the pattern says, it's knit the knits and purl the purls and always work in the color as it presents. So again, if you're not a person that likes to check off line by line. And then on the right side, you have a cable cross and then the next two right side rows are knit the knits and purl the purls. Do you have any tips for counting your rows in a cable? Sometimes I lose track if I have knit five or seven from the cable cross row and I have a hard time figuring out when I'm looking at my project. Um, I, I feel you on that. I absolutely agree that that is a thing that happens. And um, a lot of people, I didn't bring it out on camera, I have it in the other room, but they'll use one of those little clickers. I'm looking at the laptop like it can look back at me. Uh, once again, new color under old. Um, a lot of people will uh, use those stitch counters that you click every time you have a row. I've seen recently, I think these are super interesting, that people will, uh, there's a chain stitch marker and if you, uh, obviously you don't enclose it completely because you wouldn't be able to get it out, but if you uh, bring it up as you count your rows, you bring the chain up and you knit sort of around it and it will tell you what row you're on. I find those very fascinating, although I haven't used one yet, but I've seen them and I know people like them. Um, honestly, the, the place you really have to pay attention is when you set the cables. When you put that first cable cross in and then you put that second cable cross in. None of us want to make mistakes, but at that point, it, it, it becomes fairly easy to read your knitting and see that that you have made a mistake, you have made a row counting mistake. So other than that, if you're doing a really uh, elaborate cable, I hate to be that old lady, but I've got the pencil. <laughs> and I'm crossing off rows as I get to them because it is, it is super confusing. And it's, I think it's good for people to know that uh, a lot of people get confused by that. It's not you. It's a, it's a thing that happens. All right, so for the sake of argument, 
we have done our 11 cable cross rows and I have put two more rows on here. And again, you can see that my cables are starting to track towards each other. And so for the first half of the piece, I know I'm repeating, but that's how most of us learn. My increases are here in the center section, uh, or pardon me, my decreases are here at the center section, my increases are here. So where the decrease is, is where the cable's going to go. And that's always, that's not just this pattern. If you've got an increase on one side of the piece and a decrease on the other side of the piece, the cable is going to torque towards the decrease. That's just how that works. So now, if you look at the picture on the pattern, we've gone this way, and now we want to go this way to get that sort of uh, boomerang shape on the cables that we have if you look at the whole pillow. So now I'm flip-flopping my technique because the cable follows the decrease. So if I want my cable to go this way, my decrease is going to be on this side. If I want my cable to go this way, my decrease is going to be on this side. So now I'm going to have my decreases in the outer sections and my increases on the center section. But again, it is super important to remember that your stitch count does not change. Even with all this happy increase and decrease going on, you're still going to have the same number of stitches at every row. And if you're a beginner um, knitter with cables and, and, or a relatively new knitter in general, it's good to count at the end of your row, at least, at least after the cable cross rows to make sure that you are having a consistent number of stitches because you do not want to uh, be adding or subtracting. So we're coming up and once again, our, our increases or decreases, no matter what panel they're in, are going to be um, outside of the area that is defined by the purl column on the right side. So here I am, there's my purl column and I want a decrease because I want my cable to go this way. Well, so now I'm over here. We did SSK when it was going this way, but we're going to do knit two together because now we want that right leaning decrease. So there's my knit two together, purl one, and we're going to do another cable cross just for funsies. And again, this is a situation, this cable cross is going to look a little tight because if I was knitting the pattern it was written, I would have had two more rows in there but I want to get to it before our time together is done for the day. So I'm going to bring my cable to the front. I'm going to take the working yarn with it. I'm going to knit my next three off the left hand needle. One, two, three. I'm going to bring that cable leg up, bringing the working yarn with it. I got to get that working yarn back to the back because that's where it belongs for my knit stitch. I'm going to knit right off the cable needle. One, two, three. Now my working yarn is back here. Again, if I wanted to, I could have put this on a bobbin and started a new a new uh, bit of yarn here, but that's not what I wanted to do today because I did not want to be live on camera with bobbins. There's my purl. So my decrease was here, my increase is here. So I'm going to take the yarn to the back and I'm going to do that. Make one increase. I'm going to lift the horizontal bar between the stitch I just made and the next stitch on my knitting needle. I'm going to put it onto my left hand needle and I'm going to knit it through the back loop. So there's one, and I'm going to knit until I'm right up against the purl column. So there's my purl column. I'm going to make, put that, make one right there. I'm going to lift that onto my left needle and go ahead and knit through the back of the work. So I've added a stitch here. Here's my purl. I'm going to put this on a cable needle, drop it to the front, take the working yarn with it, grab my other color, knit three from the left needle, one, 
two, three. And I'm not worried about new or under old here because I'm not going to get any gaps in here because of the cables. Knit three off the cable needle, getting that working yarn back in the back where it belongs. And again, the reason it looks a little tight here is because I crossed sooner than I would have if I was knitting the pattern directly. Two, three, with that cable needle, I'm going to bring the, the color over, new under old, I'm going to purl this stitch. And now I have a decrease because I want my cable to go toward the decrease. And now we have a left leaning decrease, which is the SSK. Now I'm going to do it slightly differently than I last time I did it. This is how I do them. So I slip the first one and I slip the second one. Now instead of putting them back on the left hand needle, I'm going to take my left needle tip and go ahead and put it right in front of those two stitches. And now my right hand needle is through the back loop where it belongs. It's just slightly less movement and makes it a little faster to go. So that's how I do my SSKs. It's the same technically, it's just a little bit faster. And then I'm going to knit to the end of the row. There's my five on the border. So once again, I'm a little bit tangled up here, but that's because I have not been untangling my little balls of yarn after everything. So again, it's hard to see because we've only done the one and they're a little tight, but they went this way and now they're going to go this way. And that gives us that boomerang, boomerang shape on each side. So if I wanted to, as I said, if I wanted to go ahead and knit the back, I would just knit another piece exactly the same. And I would sew them together here. I would leave those borders free hanging, if you will. It would give me two borders around the outside of the pillow, two flanches, but that would be okay. Alternatively, you could not knit the borders. You could just go right into the cable section, cast on the same number of stitches, go right into the cables and eliminate the five stitches at the beginning and the end of the row. And that would take those side borders off. So that would give you a piece that when you sewed it to the front, you'd still only have the one flange outside the pillow. You'd have that one edging or border. Um, lastly, and what I did, I knit the front. I cut a piece of fleece fabric that was 25 inches square because I had a 24 inch pillow form. I turned under a half an inch on each of the four sides, pinned it into place here along the edging. I didn't pin it to the bitter end. I want that little border to extend past the pillow form because it's decorative. And then I hand sewed. I hand sewed it on three sides. I inserted my pillow through the top and then I finished sewing it across. You could even, if you're somebody who likes to sew, you could make an envelope section on the back if you're using fabric. You could um, cut two pieces that were 25 inches wide. And let me see. Let's see if I can do math live on, on, uh, on the knitting circle. Uh, 25, half of 25 is 12 and a half. And then I would want an inch and a half for the overlap. So that would be 13 and a half, 14. And I would want a two inch overlap, so 16. You could, if you wanted to, cut two pieces that were 25 inches wide and 16 inches tall, make a one inch hem with a half inch seam allowance and just sew that down on your machine. Excuse me. <coughs> then you could make buttonholes, you could put snaps, you could put hook and eyes, you could use uh, hook and loop tape. And that way, if you had that envelope closure in the back with your fabric, you could take your pillow out every time the piece needed to be washed. So let's see if there's any more questions because I feel like I have said everything I have to say about the denim cable, uh, let's see, denim cable floor pillow. But I do love this piece and I have to say I use it all the time in my home. And it doesn't have to be denim, it could be any kind of 
uh, colors that you like. Again, I just, I really like sort of the, the denim look of it makes it look almost upcycled. So do we have any more questions before we're wrapping it up? All right, in three, two, one. All right, thank you so much for joining me here on the Knitting Circle Live. Once again, I'm Mary Beth Temple, and I really appreciated hanging out with you today. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again here real soon. Bye-bye.